Hi everyone, welcome to the Wargaming Parrot. I'm David, and today's video is going to be all about chewable toys. It's going to be a chewable toy guide. I've been promising this video for a while, but due to the schedule, it's taken a while to get through. In this video, I'm going to talk about various types of chewable toys. I'm going to talk about some of the softer materials, the harder materials, and also give an indication of what sort of parrot each toy is suitable for. I thought it might be useful to actually show you the toys physically in front of me rather than just put pictures up on the screen, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through each individual type of material and toy and talk a little bit about the benefits of it and whether it will be suitable for your parrots too. Before I get started, I want to talk about why chewable and shreddable toys are so good. Now, there's loads of plastic toys, loads of hardwood toys, loads of toys that don't really serve much of a purpose. Now, I, I am I sort of like on the fence of plastic toys. I see a benefit to them outside the cage of training and a bit of interaction, especially if they jingle or make noises or they're good for sort of learning toys. However, um, lots of toys just don't really do anything and parrots end up looking at them, occasionally pecking at them. That's where chewable toys come into, come into their own. Chewable toys are so good because parrots can actively interact with them. They can chew through them, exhibit natural behaviors. They can even forage through them and enjoy them in that respect. They can do all sorts of things with a chewable toy. Imagine um, like you've got, you've got your hands and you want to play with something, but there's nothing you can do with this toy. You're like just holding it. But if you get a toy you can manipulate, you can sort of do things with, it's much more interesting. It's exactly the same for a parrot with a chewable toy. They've got a chewable toy, they can get their beak into it, they can chew bits off it, and they can enjoy it. So it's a, quiver, it's a difference between giving someone, I don't know, one of those very cheap handheld games machines with one game on it, or giving them a PlayStation 5. That is how much difference a chewable toy can make. You might have to train them to get used to playing with it, if they're not used to it, but they will enjoy it. It's so important to consider that when you're getting chewable toys as well, the materials are safe. So I'm just going to recommend some safe materials in this video, but always have a look at a manufacturer's website. And if you see something that's a bit funny, um, maybe ask us or ask the internet, just make sure everything's okay. Generally, most toys will be safe, but it's always best to be doubly sure. I thought I'd let these two little monsters out for filming because they still need their outings, even though I have to get this done. So the first material I wanted to talk about is yucca. Now, I have a few different examples of this. I have this lovely chewable swing, which Olive absolutely adores going on. I have the very traditional kebab. The most common sort of supplier of these guys is called Wesco, and they do some very good sort of different shapes and interesting things. They also have some very cute themes for names, like um, Mexican sort of theme names. But the things that we find most useful with our parrots, you can see Pickles is actually quite interested in this, are these just little um, half moon shapes and moon shapes, you can just get them loose, and they absolutely love chewing them on the bottom of the cage. Now, why I recommend Yucca, and why I've included this first in the list, is it tends to be our parrot's favorite. It is one of the softest woods. So this stuff is very suitable for small to medium beaks. Um, a large parrot may get through it too quickly, so I wouldn't recommend it for a large parrot, but for small to medium parrots, this stuff is so easily chewable and shreddable, it makes a perfect toy, and it's very easy for them to get their beaks into, and they'll get through them quickly. I'll just see if Pickles wants a bit. There you go, she's um, climbing on to chew it now. Scampies come along as well. They'll get through it very quickly, but that means they're enjoying it, and it's lots and lots of fun for them. The next material I want to cover is balsa. Now balsa is another very suitable wood for smaller beaks. This is, can be from something as small as a budgie all the way up to a medium beak, for example, like um, a cake or cakey. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> we haven't got one, but they're very cute. Anyway, balsa, here you can see a couple of examples here, is quite hard to find in the UK. So we tend to just buy it in small parts and make our own toys from it. It's a very soft wood, just like yucca, just like I mentioned. And then the other good sort of benefit about softwoods is you can make your own homemade toys out of them very easily. You can push a hole through, thread a string through and make your own toys. But let me see if Pickles is willing to demonstrate. She's uh, currently climbing on a boy's cage. Let me see if I can get just a normal bit. Can you put, chew that for me? She's a bit camera shy right now, I'm afraid. So there we go, she's having a go at it. But it's very, very easy to chew. And that makes it a very, very good material. And again, because it's easily shreddable, it makes it lots of fun for them. It's going to be not interested too. So that's a great um, example of it because they're not interested in chewing. But anyway. Balsa is very good because it's so easily shreddable and it makes it very easily destructible and it's very easy to make homemade toys out of. So that's a very, very good material. If you're in America, you'll probably be able to source it much more readily. So it'll be a lot cheaper for you to get. So awesome toy. This next one is a kind of a late addition and that's his coconut 
Traditionally, we haven't been able to buy many coconut kebabs, we just bought bits of them. But coconut is quite a versatile and good material for shreddable toys. Why do you ask? This kebab, for example, has some very, very soft, fibrous bits, which are very easy to chew. But it also has some quite hard bits as well, which are much more difficult to chew. And this makes it much more interesting as a toy. So this can be suitable for all the way, uh, all the way from a very small beak all the way to a very big beak. So it makes it a very versatile toy and it's not very hard to find or very expensive anymore. So a coconut kebab can be useful for all sorts of different types of parrot from easily shreddable all the way through to hard. So I recommend this as a chewable toy because it's very, very good. The next material I'd like to talk about is cardboard. Now cardboard is extremely cheap, it's easy to source, you can make your own homemade toys out of it, which makes it a great material for toys. Cardboard can also come in quite soft, um, a soft format, I suppose the way you say it. For example, it's quite thin on this toy, so it's easy to chewable, chew through, and it can come in a denser sort of material, which makes it harder to chew through. This makes it very good for all sorts of uses, and it can be useful for a parrot toy from, again, from a small beak all the way to a macaw, for example, if you have very dense cardboard. And while a macaw is going to get through exceptionally quickly, it's still very cheap and easy to replace. So these are two examples. This is sort of like a hardwood and dense cardboard mix the, bo um, the boys have been at. This is like a pizza slice, very thin foraging toy with holes in it. I do apologise, I don't know why the boys have decided to suddenly start screaming while I'm filming. Probably because they're having a swabble. I'm going to try and finish this segment and then I'm going to stop for a moment and try and calm them down. But yes, cardboard is very, very good. The next material I'd like to talk about is palm leaf. Now palm leaf is an excellent material for chewable toys. And while it's not as easy to make toys um, out of DIY wise or as easy to source, it is awesome. One of the best brands for palm leaf toys is Planet Pleasures. And then you've also got Hagen and Harry and other brands which are quite good too. I absolutely love these toys. Our parrots love these toys and they are great. I mean, look at the, the versatility of color and how pretty they look, how appealing visually they are. This one's got a preening end to it. Just, and they're just so easily shreddable and generally you can hide treats in them. So palm leaf makes an excellent toy material and something I highly recommend for anyone looking for shreddable toys and destructive toys for their parrots. And while I'd say it's not always the most suitable for larger parrots, some of the larger toys, while they'll get through them quite quickly, are good, but they're exceptionally suitable for small to medium beaks. We've had a birdie swap, so we had to have a pause because these two are just too excited by filming the sun and parrots. Are probably very excited to come out, so now we've got the boys out. The next to um, toy material I want to talk about is like a woven basket material. And I've got a couple of examples here. You've got sort of busy mats and um, all sorts of things like that. Um, I'm, please forgive me, I can't remember exactly what it's called. But this is quite a good material as well. It presents a sort of um, challenge to smaller beaks. It's quite hard to destroy. However, it's also quite useful um, for larger beaks because, again, it's quite difficult to destroy. And you can get a variety of toys from it. It's not one of the most popular materials to make toys out of. However, you can still source it. So it's quite a good material. Now, you may notice a lack of certain types of toys. And this is because this is a chewable toy guide. So I am deliberately excluding stuff like plastic toys, uh, bells, mirrors, that sort of thing, because they're just not chewable. They're completely useless on that front, as I mentioned earlier in the video, as to why chewable toys are good. So here's a couple more examples of chewable toys. Now, this is kind of a double, um, the boys are off, just you know, uh, squawk at the top of the curtain pole. A couple of double examples. Now, leather, they've got leather straps on here, which is an excellent material for any type of parrot especially make sure it's actually safe leather, by the way, if you're getting that, because it's very chewable, um, it's a little bit harder to get through and bite bits off of, but you do like to play with it. And then you've got hardwood. Now, hardwood isn't the best material for small beaks because they just can't chew it. There are so many hardwood toys that are designed for small parrots, but generally they don't serve any more uh, purpose than plastic. This is a bit of an exception for ours, because what they like to do is they like to pull on discs and then chew it leather. So in some circumstances, hardwood can be useful. However, for big beaks, hardwood is awesome. Imagine a macaw trying to have a go at um, a palm leaf toy, and I'll shred it in a moment. They had a go at a hardwood toy, uh, Chibi singing now, they had a go at a hardwood toy, it would take them a lot longer, and it would be a bit more satisfying to get their beak through. So hardwood toys are awesome, and they chew it. Hardwood toys are awesome for the larger parrots, but not so good for smaller ones. The last sort of chewable toy thing is just an example of a DIY toy. For example here, we've got an old egg carton we've sterilized, 
and then we've got some bits of paper they can chew at. It's all shreddable. We've got some bits of bolster in there they can chew, and you can easily make your own chewable, shreddable toys and foraging toys for your parrots to enjoy and interact with. They're so easy, they're lots of fun. So keep it in mind when you're um, considering chewable, shreddable toys. They needn't be all very expensive. You can also recycle old ones, take bits off of it. You can make your own. So guys, I hope you found this video useful and it was enjoyable to watch. As usual, any questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comments. Always happy to hear from you. If you need any advice on toys, also happy to hear from you. I've got some examples in my Amazon store, but generally you want to go to a dedicated um, parrot retailer to get your chewable toys, because there's much more variety there. In the meantime, uh, from me, a very noisy chip and fish. Take care and have a great day.